Hey, my name is Veronica Bjorkman, and I'm the Director of Family Outreach and Support here at Columbia. We are so happy and excited that you were able to join us for our last webinar of the 2023 Summer Webinar Series. We were thrilled to collaborate and co-host this year's webinar series with our colleagues in the Office of Undergraduate Student Life. We have enjoyed hosting you in July and August, and today's webinar is for transfer visiting and combined plan move-in for families. These webinars lead up to the big transfer visiting and combined plan welcome from which we will talk about today. A few housekeeping items before we begin. The information in today's webinar and throughout our whole webinar series is specific to undergraduate students in Columbia College, Columbia Engineering, and their families. Our panelists will present for about 30 to 40 minutes, and we will have time at the end for questions. In the Zoom webinar platform, you may ask a question via the Q&A submission box. Given the large number of participants in today's webinar, unfortunately, we will not be able to answer every question, but if you still have questions, we want you to reach out. And we are also recording this webinar for families who cannot make it, and it will be available in a few days on our YouTube channel at Family at Columbia. So let me talk about today's agenda. First of all, I'm gonna do some introductions and then I'm gonna pass it to my colleagues in wellness. We're gonna talk about what you need to do to prepare for your arrival, the actual move-in process, about the Dean's welcome and the events that we have going on, and then allow some questions um, at the end for you to, some time at the end to ask questions. So let's get started. Joining us today from the Office of Undergraduate Student Life is the Assistant Director for Student Engagement, Nestor Hernandez. Good morning, Nestor. Good morning, everyone. So happy that you could join us. I would like to also welcome our Administrative Coordinator for the Office of Student and Family Support, Joanne Neal. Hi, Joanne. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanna let you know that um, I'm gonna be putting a lot of uh, links in the chat. You can take a picture or copy and paste, but they will also be available on the recording for the webinar. All right, and our Associate Dean of Student and Family Support, Matthew Potashnik. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, Veronica, and good morning, everyone. It's great to see all of you. I know uh, how brave you all are for starting uh, a different journey within your college and undergraduate career, and so we're excited to welcome you into this new educational experience. Welcome to Columbia. And now I would like to welcome our special guest panelists. Joining us today is Minley Mansu, the Director of Operations and Systems for Columbia Housing. Good morning, Minley. Good morning, Veronica. Uh, good morning, everyone. Happy to be here and excited to have you on campus with us. And I would also like to welcome Crystal Diaz, the Assistant Director for Student Wellness for the Office of Student and Family Support. Good morning, Crystal. Good morning, Veronica, and good morning, everyone. Excited uh, for move-in. That's just a short couple of days away. And last but certainly not least, Stephanie King, the Assistant Dean of Student Wellness for the Office of Student and Family Support. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Veronica, and good morning, everyone. We look forward to chatting with you today and welcoming you to our campus. Wonderful. All right, and now I'm going to pass it off to Stephanie. Hi. So we know that this is a panel conversation specifically for transfer students, combined plan and visiting students. And so this is not the first time you are starting at college, but this is their first time starting at Columbia and that transition to a new college and a new campus can bring with it significant changes for their student, but also their whole family. And we want to acknowledge that, that it's going to come with adjustments for everybody. We also know it's a big move to move to New York City um, and it requires a lot of planning and may have brought about some stress. We're hopeful that this conversation today and the presentations will be help uh, reducing that stress. We also want to encourage all of you um, to think about how you can find ways to manage that stress. Our office, Student and Family Support, but also Student Wellness, is here to support your student um, throughout this Co Columbia journey. And we plan to be actively involved with you all and getting to know all of you throughout this journey. But we know that this next few days, next few weeks, will be additionally stressful. So we encourage you to think about this from your own personal perspective, what that means for your household. Um, take time to talk about this transition with your student and your family and the feelings that may arise coming out of uh, this big move that your student is making. Um, it's a, it's a definitely an exciting time, but it's 
filled with a lot of mixed emotions and you may be missing your student as well. So I'm gonna pass it over to our uh, assistant director, Crystal Diaz, who's gonna talk us through some ways to ease the transition. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Stephanie. Really appreciate what you had to say. Uh, I just wanna, I'm gonna be quick, take maybe five minutes of your time. And uh, just wanted to acknowledge that with starting a new school, starting um, something different, there are a lot of mixed emotions that come in, not only for the students themselves, but um, the family members that are along for the ride, right? And so when I'm speaking to a couple of these wellness tips, I'm speaking to students, but I'm also speaking to family members. Um, so this is not your first rodeo, you know what this is like. Uh, so you already know kind of uh, the feelings that arise, um, but be prepared to, you know, feel some different things um, and some kind of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, some things that you might want to do uh, during move-in weekend and just in general uh, during your time during this transition is uh, maybe have a scheduled check-in with your student. So if you're the student or a part of the family, one of the ways that you can stay connected is uh, just to agree upon a time, like maybe on Sunday afternoons or on Tuesdays, once you walk from one class to another, uh, just schedule a check-in, see how everyone's doing, uh, maybe in a group chat, a family group chat or something like that. Um, for the families, you know, maybe it's a, uh, you're, you're, maybe over the summer your student was at home and now they're gone. What are you gonna do with all that time? Uh, this might be a good time, especially if you're feeling, you know, once they're gone, you're feeling their, the emptiness there. It may be a good time to rediscover or invest more time in your hobbies. Um, this is close for everybody. Uh, this is definitely a time that you should uh, just be extra vigilant to take care of yourself physically. Sometimes when we get, you know, uh, busy or stressed, or there's, especially when you're moving, uh, we tend to forget to kind of take care of ourselves physically. So if you have a active workout regimen, make sure that you're at least, you know, modifying it for the time. Um, make sure you're eating and make sure you're staying hydrated. Honestly, moving is, uh, can be a little bit stressful and we tend to forget to drink water. Uh, so just be, you know, aware, like, am I a little bit grumpy right now? Maybe I should drink some water. Um, and, you know, if you're feeling of mixed emotions, maybe a lot of excitement, maybe you're sad, maybe you're anxious, maybe you're overwhelmed, um, this is definitely a great time to reach out to a trusted friend, a family member, or just to check in with your therapist and see how you're doing. Um, another thing that I like to remind students in general <clears throat> is that, you know, we're human, we have a range of human emotions, and it's time to reassure yourself that it's okay to feel sad. So during movement, once you maybe, you know, it's uh, you're the student and you're seeing your family member leave or you're the family member and you're saying goodbye to your student, even if it's the first, the second, third, fourth, fifth time, your fourth, fifth child leaving, um, it's OK to feel sad and it's OK to just have that moment of like, oh, I'm going to miss this person, you know, uh, just remind yourself of that. And lastly, you know, uh, sometimes we remind ourselves of all of these things, uh, but sometimes we need uh, an activity to do uh, to actually make ourselves feel better. Uh, so this is a great time, especially uh, during the actual process of moving, um, to take a moment for uh, to practice a little bit of mindfulness. Uh, now, just so that I can leave y'all with a tool, we're going to practice a one to two minute uh, mindfulness uh, kind of situation here. Um, if you don't want to participate, just kind of tune me out. Uh, but this is something that you can use during move-in time. This is something that you can use, you know, if you're a student during midterms, this is something that you can use just on a random Tuesday, you know, in November. Uh, so if y'all want to get comfortable, if you're sitting, if you're standing, whatever you're doing, just kind of take a moment, situate yourself. Um, you can close your eyes if you'd like, you don't have to. Um, but this, again, this is a quick med meditation technique that you can use at any time. So take a moment to uh, close your eyes if you wish. If not, just kind of uh, let your gaze fall into something that is comfortable to look at. We're gonna take a deep breath in. We're gonna hold it here for a couple of seconds. And now we're gonna let that breath out. Now, if you can, you want your exhales to be a little bit longer than your inhales. It decreases your heart rate a little bit. So now we're going to take another deep breath in. Hold up here for a couple of seconds. And let it go. 
Now, this is a good time to notice if you have any tension anywhere in your body, any discomfort, any maybe pain, something that's going on. Um, I hold my tension in my shoulders, but it might be in your neck. It might be in your back. Um, it might be in your stomach. It might even be in your legs or you might just feel a little bit restless. So take a moment to think about where, you're, where you store your tension and just focus on that area of your body for a moment. Now, as you take your deep breath in, continue to think about that place of tension. And when you exhale this time, try your best to maybe let go a little bit of that tension, even if it's only 5%, even if you're only acknowledging, hey, I have discomfort in this area, just take a moment to give this space in your body a little bit of time. So now take a exhale. Great. Now it's time to take a moment to, to thank yourself for taking the taking a little bit of time for yourself. Sometimes we get, you know, caught up in the busyness of life and everything that's going on when we forget that we have to take care of our own selves. So take a moment, pat yourself on the back. Um, and whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes slowly. And thank you so much for joining us in the short meditation. Whenever you you need a moment, you can uh, use that just to kind of ease a little bit of the tension um, and get yourself excited again for, for movement and all that good stuff that's happening. Uh, so thank you again so much. And I'm going to hand it back over to Stephanie King. Thank you, Crystal, for talking with us about how to take care of ourselves during this very stressful time. Um, so as we are going through move-in and maybe we're waiting in lines or we're carrying heavy things and we're waiting in elevators, let's think about how we can just take a deep breath, um, and there's going to be plenty of support on campus. Our entire office will uh, be around not only for moving, but throughout your journey with Columbia. And so please reach out if ever, anything ever comes up. Um, and now I ask, I pass it back to Matthew Potashnik. Great. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Crystal. Uh, I do want to just take a moment to give everyone an introduction um, to the broader work of student and family support and some big tips to help prepare you all um, to make your transition to Columbia a healthy and happy one. In addition to the tips that Crystal um, just shared with us in the guided meditation, um, I want to let you know that there's a whole dedicated team of professionals that work to support students 24 hours a day. And if ever you don't know where to start, you can always reach out to the team here in student and family support. Uh, we will stay in constant communication with all parents and families um, through weekly newsletters uh, and constant information about things that are happening on campus. Uh, we're also a place that students and families can go if they have a question or they need a resource or a referral to an office on campus. We work very closely to support students uh, on any issue, question, problem, or concern they're having and their parents and family members. We know that for many students, the first person they're going to turn to when there's a question or a concern is a parent or family member. So we want to make sure that all of you know who to contact and how to resource, um, how to access resources on campus. So we're excited to be partners with all of you in this incredible journey. Um, our office works very closely to support students with um, personal academic and wellness issues, um, academic integrity, and anything else that's on a student's mind. We're also the place um, that will invite you to campus for events like uh, family orientation that's happening next Tuesday. Uh, as well as um, family weekend in October um, and graduation uh, in May, uh, whenever your student is ready to graduate. So we're excited um, to keep you as a parent or family member involved, excited, and engaged with everything that your student is doing on campus. Uh, the one thing that I want to start our conversation today is by acknowledging that Columbia is different. You are all coming from other institutions. You're all coming with uh, backgrounds and educational experiences um, in schools that may be much larger than Columbia, in institutions that may be much smaller than Columbia, in cities that may be um, much, much smaller, um, or in global capitals across the world that may be bigger than New York City. Uh, but I want to sort of take a moment to challenge you all to think about how Columbia is different. For those of you that are joining the School of Engineering as a combined plan 3-2 student, you're transitioning from a liberal arts education into an engineering-based 
um, education. For those of you that are transferring from a different school, you're also about to embark on an incredible new journey. So don't make assumptions about Columbia. Be very open and ask a lot of questions. Our policies, uh, both in terms of campus life and academic expectations, may be similar or may be different than what you're used to. So ask a lot of questions. Don't make assumptions that because something existed in a particular way at your previous institution that it exists here at Columbia in the same manner. Um, you know, I have the example up here, Pantone 290 is our official Columbia blue, but there's a lot of different shades of blue and there's a lot of different types and kinds of institutions of higher education. So we're excited to introduce you to our uh, Columbia experience, but we want you to be open to the fact that this is gonna be very different. Um, and we hope that you're excited for this difference. Uh, we hope that uh, we can help acclimate you and transition you into the Columbia way of, of thinking and, and the incredible opportunities that exist here. Um, we, we just need you to be open um, and ask lots of good questions to help you um, take full advantage of this incredible experience. So Crystal alluded to this in her uh, opening words. One of the things that you should start doing right now with parents and family members is uh, making a communications plan. And this is something that is critically important. Uh, your time is going to be suddenly very busy. For those of you that are 3-2 combined plan students, um, you are only here for two years. Um, and so it's going to go by very, very quickly. Your time is going to be very busy in the classroom, taking full advantage of all the great resource um, and research opportunities on campus. For those of you that are transfer students, you may be here for three or two years uh, and the same sort of thing. Um, you may wanna take full advantage of everything that Columbia has to offer. Um, you just have a, a little bit less of a time in which to do it. Um, but don't forget um, to carve out time um, for your support network, your family and friends. Uh, you're gonna be very busy. Um, so as Crystal mentioned, talk about setting these expectations. How often do you wanna be kept in, um, in communication with parents and families? How often are your parents and families expecting you to stay in communication? Talk about all this now and set some of those expectations in advance uh, because it's gonna be uh, important. Um, so set up your group chat, set up your family FaceTime, um, weekly meetings. Uh, and then if you are uh, still looking for some of the technology to support you in doing that, know that there's some really great discounts available to help you purchase new cell phones or computers or other technologies, um, as well as mobile phone plans that offer discounts to members of the Columbia community. So we think communication is one of the foundational elements of being successful in college. We want to make sure you have all the tools necessary in order to do that. Uh, one of the things that goes along with communications is this concept of FERPA. Uh, so FERPA is the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. It's a federal law that governs the privacy of student records. Um, so one of the things that you and your families should talk about now is how will you share grades at the end of every semester? And we think it's really important that you talk about this now because Columbia doesn't mail grades home. In fact, the only place that grades are shared are on student services online at the end of the semester. Uh, high school is very different than college. Um, Columbia may be different from colleges that you attended prior. Uh, we... Um, really only release grades once a semester, and the only place you'll see it is on SSOL. That doesn't mean that faculty aren't keeping track of your academic performance and that students aren't able to make um, sort of good uh, guesses about how they're doing in every class. Um, and faculty will reach out to us if, we are if they are concerned about a student and work with us to intervene. Um, but it, this is a good moment to talk about sharing important pieces of data about your life at Columbia um, with families and for families to know what to expect. Um, please note that FERPA really does cover just the privacy of student records. Uh, it does not cover health information. And so this is another good moment for students and families to talk about how parents and, um, and families want to be kept informed about important life events and or uh, medical issues that may be impacting a student. But know that our team is committed to the health and wellness of all of our students. And if ever we are concerned about the academic wellness or personal uh, the safety of a student, we will always work uh, with parents and families to help them um, support us in intervening and getting the student the care and support that they may need. But this is a good moment for everyone to talk uh, about how do you want to be kept informed about things at Columbia. The other thing that I would say is there's an incredible amount of resources at Columbia. Uh, get to know all of them. For those of you that are arriving um, for the new student orientation program as a 3-2 student, um, as a transfer student, or as an exchange or visiting student, go to the sessions. Take full advantage of everything that Columbia is offering during the orientation sessions. Uh, 
read your emails. Uh, there's a lot of great information. Uh, go to office hours, engage with staff, engage with faculty. And for parents and families, we encourage you to do the same. Pay attention to the emails and social media posts that Veronica puts out. Uh, we invest a lot of time and energy in sharing resources because we know how important it is um, that when a student is experiencing a personal issue or has a question or is challenged by something, um, that the earlier we can get them to the most helpful resource, um, the better the outcome will be. Um, so get to know the resources, fully engage and be present at NSOP. And for parents and families, know that there's a whole team here to support you as well. Uh, this is all tied to this concept of Colum at Columbia that is something that is critically important to everything that we do. And that is this concept of asking for help. All of our students are incredibly smart. They uh, have had incredible academic journeys up until this point, but this is a moment of transition and transitions can be difficult. We want everyone to know, whether it's a student, a parent or a family member, that asking for help at Columbia is not a sign of weakness. Asking for help is a sign of strength. You can ask for help in a classroom, in a faculty member's office hours. You can ask for help in our office, in undergraduate student life and housing. Uh, in any office on campus. We are here to help you. And if we are not the right office to help you with your particular question or concern, we will get you connected to the office that is. Um, so please uh, ask for help. Again, if you're a student, if you're a parent, if you're a family member, there's an entire team of people that are on call 24 hours a day. Uh, Menley's office too, also open 24 hours a day. We have professional staff on campus that are there to provide immediate support to students and families, um, but you need to let us know if um, you're experiencing an issue or concern um, so that we can step in and help. A couple of other quick things before I kick it over to Menly. Um, one of the most complicated parts about joining a new college community is that you're going to have to learn a whole new language. There's a lot of words and phrases that we use at Columbia that don't exist anywhere else in the world. And so we hope that you um, are able to understand everything that we're saying and all of our colloquial expressions. Uh, but if ever you encounter a word or a phrase that doesn't quite make sense, let us know. Uh, we hope that you become quickly fluent in the language of Columbia. Uh, and as parents or family members, you may find it somewhat difficult to understand exactly what it is that your student is trying to say. But to us, that's a sign of great success. That means that your student is becoming part of our campus um, and they're excited by everything that they're experiencing here, um, but we hope that um, this language becomes very familiar to all of you. And if ever you encounter a word or a phrase that doesn't make meaning, let us know and we'll help translate it for you. Two other quick points. Uh, there's a lot of information online and not all of it is accurate. Uh, I know there's a lot of different social media groups for students, for parents and family members. Um, please know that Columbia is a very large decentralized university with undergraduate students and graduate students spanning multiple campuses and multiple continents. And so sometimes information that you see online um, or in one of the social media groups may apply to a specific student type student population or location. Uh, and I know that sometimes we get lots of questions from parents or family members or students who are saying, well, I read something on Facebook that said this. And once we sort of unpack the question and provide the right framing and context, we're able to um, help translate that to the specific context. Uh, but know that this is a big institution and the rules and policies of one school may not apply to the rules and policies of another school. Uh, also, we are in an incredible moment where artificial intelligence, chat GBT, and other tools um, are taking over. And so for those of you that are joining our academic community, make sure you understand what's expected of you, um, where use or non-use of these tools or technologies um, will be appropriate. So please make sure that you're not putting yourself in a situation uh, where you're inappropriately using some of these technologies. And then for students that you fully understand everything um, that was on the online tutorials related to academic integrity. Uh, the final point um, that I have here is just get some good sleep. Uh, Crystal alluded to taking care of yourself, drinking lots of water. Um, the single most important thing you can do to be ready for this transition um, is to take care of yourself and to get some good sleep. Columbia Health has an incredible resource that's open to students and families um, about um, sleep and the importance that it has um, for our mind and our body. They offer an online sleep assessment that I would encourage all students and families to do um, to help um, prepare you um, because New York City is truly the city that doesn't sleep. And being in this city means occasionally taking advantage of the nightlife. Um, and and uh, we want you to sort of be able to achieve that balance 
um, and achieve um, the ability to um, take full advantage of Columbia during the day and at night. And one of the ways that you can do that is get some good rest because one of the most important functions that you're gonna do next week is um, to move to campus. And Menley is gonna take it over now to talk about the things that you need to do to get ready for that physical move to campus. Thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, hello again, everyone. Uh, as Veronica said at the beginning, I work with the housing team and I'm the director of operations and systems. So for me as an operator, uh, my theme is no surprises as far as moving on to campus is concerned. Uh, so to that end, a lot of what I will share may sound repetitive, but that's because it has been shared before. Uh, we wanna make sure that everyone has all of the information that they need. So to start, Here's the most important date that you should all know, and that is August 29th, 2023. Uh, that Tuesday is transfer visiting and combined plan student check-in. Uh, at Columbia Housing, what we refer to as check-in is the activity of actually checking with our team and moving into your room. So you'll hear moving, you hear check-in. It's kind of interchangeable here at Columbia. So to Matthew's point, learning the language of Columbia, when folks say check-in, it's a different kind of check-in than what Crystal was talking about. So we just wanna make sure that everyone's on the same page uh, with what check-in is. Next, we'll talk about what you can expect uh, at check-in. So as you can see from these five steps, uh, the check-in day process is very straightforward and simple. All students will need to check in. First, you'll arrive, you should plan to arrive at your assigned time, uh, which can be checked on the housing portal. Then you'll proceed to your check-in station. Uh, your assigned check-in station, I should point out, because there are going to be different check-in stations on that day. Uh, there will be four, and they'll run from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., and there'll be signage present if you cannot find your check-in station. And if you get totally lost, you can always come to Hartley Hall, where our Hartley Hospitality Desk is, and we can help you find your location. At your check-in station, you will pick up your CUID, which looks like this, but much nicer because mine is old. Um, this will actually serve as your student ID and also as your room key to be able to get into your room, to be able to get into your building in your room. Uh, and in a rare case, some people will have a building that has hard keys. At that time, you will get the hard key if you are one of the folks who are going to live in that kind of building. Uh, once you've completed check-in, you'll proceed to your building in your room. Uh, next, you'll, we ask that you complete the room condition report, our RCR. Uh, in the check-in survey. The RCR just tells us about the condition of your room as it was when you arrived. Uh, so when you move out, we make sure that we understand what state the room was in when you left. Uh, the check-in survey is about 90 seconds and it just tells us how your experience was, how the communications worked, and just to make sure that we can improve the experience in the future. Finally, you'll unpack and make yourself comfortable for your stay with us in Columbia Housing uh, and get ready to enjoy the academic year. So. Next, we'll talk about some really important check-in reminders. We want you to have the best check-in experience uh, possible. And our recommendation is to make sure that you review these steps and some of these things can be done even before you arrive. Uh, so again, arriving at your assigned time is super important. We're going to be moving in a few hundred students and it's a large logistical operation. Uh, so arriving at your assigned time is important to make sure that you have a smooth experience. Uh, you'll wanna make a parking plan. Uh, parking in New York City, I don't know if you've heard about it. Uh, it's not always the easiest because there's so many people here. It's a great city. Everyone will enjoy it if it's gonna be your first time here. But whether you have a rental car or if you're bringing your own car, uh, you will need to find parking and it is not always available uh, because of the number of people here. And also it being New York City, there might be work being done, streets might be closed for various reasons. So uh, what you think is a parking spot may not actually be one, uh, but you can always check our website for a list of local garage options as well. Uh, just be aware some garages may require only certain people can park there. So even if it's closed, it might be full. So just uh, keep that in mind in terms of how parking goes. Uh, important thing about finding your check-in station, I did say that there'll be four on that day, but those are going to be assigned uh, for you. So you need to go to the right check-in station because you can go to any one of our check-in stations and we can direct you to the one you need to be at, but your ID uh, and or your key will only be at your assigned check-in station. So it's really important to make sure that you get to the right one. Uh, we will have move-in supplies available for you. Uh, some of the lucky folks, their check-in station is a building, so it's, you know, it's kind of a short distance. Uh, but for other folks, uh, you'll be able to get moving supplies at your check-in station, and you'll be able to move your items over to your room and building. The moving supplies are going to be corrugated bins and also dollies. Uh, in the picture there, you can kind of see what it looks like. 
Uh, they're pretty easy to move and it should be a simple process uh, for anyone who's going to be using those items. Uh, again, complete the RCR, which is really important. And you want to review your housing assignment information and any communications that were shared in advance. Uh, all of the communications that we send are actually posted onto our website. So although we send them directly to the student, as parents and family, you can go onto our website and see exactly what we sent to the student. So again, we stay in the theme of no surprises. Um, so next, we'll go to our important check-in of resources information. Uh, the best resource for check-in is our website. Uh, we have a dedicated page for transfer visiting combined plan check-in. Uh, what's important to note about that is the name is a little bit different on the housing page. It says transfer combined plan and exchange students, but that page is for you and or your student. Uh, so that is where you want to go to find out everything about your check-in day, the process, and the things that I've listed here. Uh, what you'll find is a step-by-step -step overview of what you can expect, the arrival information, the instructions, uh, your residence halls. If you haven't checked out the residence halls yet, you should go to that page to understand what's in the room, what you need to bring, what you don't need to bring. We have really informative videos about what you'll find within the space that can help you pack and plan before you arrive. Uh, another super important resource is, again, the housing portal. Uh, that is uni, what we call a uni and password is required. Uh, that is for your student. So if you don't know what a uni is, that's why. Uh, so only the student will be able to log into that to see the housing assignment and any communications that are shared there. Uh, we would also recommend following us on social media. Uh, we're on Instagram at Columbia Housing and Facebook at Columbia University Housing. We post check-in FAQs, rifle tips, uh, links and resources, and it's a great way for both students and families to learn more about housing as we continue to post about our processes throughout the year. Uh, pro tip, these resources will be key when something called room selection arrives in the future for the folks who will be participating in that, uh, but that's a process and a story for another day, but it's great to follow us now just to stay in the know. Uh, finally, if you have any questions, uh, please contact the Hartley Hospitality Desk, which is located in Hartley Hall. As Matthew mentioned, the desk is staffed 24-7 during the academic periods, and it's a great resource for students. We can answer, obviously, anything and everything about undergraduate housing, but also have general information about university services as well and connect you or your student to someone uh, whenever they need help. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for all of your time today. The housing team, again, is excited to meet all of you in person. Now I'm going to pass it back to my colleague, Veronica, who will talk about the family orientation schedule. Thank you, Minley. So let's chat about our schedule for your big move-in day. Family check-in will begin in Rune Artledge Auditorium in Alfred Lerner Hall from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you will be able to enter at the doors on Broadway. Our staff will be available from 9 to 5 p.m. to assist with your check-in, answer any questions, and kind of point you in the right direction. When you arrive, you'll receive your name badge, some fun Columbia swag, and a printed schedule for the day. From 12 to 1 p.m., you can enjoy a family luncheon with your student and other visiting transfer and combined plan families in a hospitality tent on Hamilton Lawn. Please remember to bring your name badge when you enter the tent. At 1 p.m. in Rune Art Auditorium in Alfred Leonard Hall, Columbia College and Columbia Engineering transfer visiting combined plan students and their families are invited to join Columbia College Dean Yosef Surrett and Columbia Engineering Dean Shifu Chang, Dean of Undergraduate Student Life Kristen Krom and the student leaders at this official welcome ceremony, recognizing the beginning of the student's undergraduate experience at Columbia. And we highly encourage you to come. It's gonna be an amazing day. Um, and we're, we're here to just answer any questions. We want you to take pictures. We want you to just come and experience what Columbia is gonna be like for your student. And so we thank you so much. It looks like there are some questions coming in. Let's see. Okay, here's a question. If I am a commuter student, will I have a check-in station, Minley? Yes, you will. Uh, you'll be able to pick up your uh, ID and uh, at the Hartley Hospitality Desk, and we can direct you. Awesome. Okay, Minley, I know you talked a little bit about kind of having the supplies when they check in that they can use, like the dollies and the bin. 
and like having a parking plan. But can you talk just a little bit more about the actual process? I know that move in day on um, the 27th looks a lot different than transfer visiting combined plan move in. So can they drive on campus? Should they bring things by car? How do they unload all of the items? Can you just kind of go over that in more detail? For sure, the process is a little bit different on the 29th. It's not as many students, so uh, folks won't be uh, on campus. Uh, I don't know if you've been to campus before, but if folks are thinking about when you say driving on the campus is a main walkway we have here, which was 116th Street, which we, we call College Walk. If that's what folks are referring to, you can drive near there, but you won't be able to come directly on to College Walk on this day. Uh, and many of the check-in stations are actually not uh, near uh, College Walk. So you'll drive directly to that building where your check-in station is uh, listed. Uh, those check-in stations are 619 West 113th Street, Carlton Arms uh, Hall, Ween Hall and again Hartley Hall uh, where our office is located so you again should have received this in your communication uh, just please reference what your exact check-in location is and you'll go directly to that check-in location uh, and you'll be again probably dropped off because it, it may be hard to find parking. Thank you. So we know that a lot of students are coming from far away and especially with the way that flights are now delayed a lot of times. What happens if they their flight, if a student's or family's flight is delayed and they can't get to their, their check-in um, station on time? What should they do? I'll take that. Uh, if you can't get to your check-in station on time, uh, again, we're 24 seven, so you can actually come right to the Hartley Hall Hospitality Desk. Our team will be here and we'll still be able to check you in. Uh, and we'll have supplies available still to help you uh, get into your building and your room. Okay. Another question. How does pickup or delivery of shift boxes after the 815 deadline work? I'll take that on behalf of mail. We work very closely with them. Uh, so if you have boxes or items that are being shipped to the university, uh, you should check out the mail website to make sure that all of that is filled out properly. Uh, then you'll actually get a notification from the mail team when that item is available, and you can go to the mail center to pick it up. Uh, if you sent it before to have it delivered to your room, it'll be in your room when you arrive. Wonderful. Um, let's talk a little bit about New York transportation. Um, some folks might be get, coming in early, getting a hotel. Um, can we kind of talk about a little bit about the subway stops, Matthew, and, and folks that are going to be using either Uber or Lyft or using the subway? Can we talk a little bit about that? Sure, absolutely. And Joanne, we'll put some of these links and in, uh, information into the chat. But uh, New York City is incredibly well connected by public transportation, and Columbia is um, incredibly lucky to be very well connected to um, the public transportation network. We actually have a subway station right outside our main gates. 116th and Broadway, right on the one train. It is not uncommon for some students to actually move in using the subway. Uh, you'll see quite a bit of students carrying luggage and other items on the subway as they make their move to campus. We're also very well connected to the bus um, system in New York. Um, the M60 is going to be one of your most important bus lines. It actually um, directly connects you to all of the terminals at LaGuardia Airport. Um, the MTA has an incredible website and a mobile app, um, also Google Maps, Apple Maps. Um, there's a lot of different resources that you can use to navigate the New York City subway. Uh, we expect all of our students to um, take full advantage of New York City and to get comfortable using the public transportation network to get to things like internships um, or research opportunities, but also to take full advantage of the cultural, artistic, and athletic uh, events that happen all across the city in all five boroughs. And so um, public transportation is the lifeblood of New York City. Um, all of our students need to figure it out. During orientation, the orientation leaders will be available to help um, give some useful tips and information about navigating the subway. One of the coolest features now is most of our cell phones have um, a wallet app where you can actually store a credit card or debit card um, to use as a transit card that enables you to just tap your cell phone or your smartwatch um, and enter the turnstile without ever taking out your wallet um, or a credit card or the Metro card. So um, we will give lots of information to students and families, but it is a um, it is literally the lifeblood of New York and something that um, most New Yorkers um, consider a point of pride. Awesome. Matthew, a lot of folks are probably going to forget a few items when they get here. 
and they're probably going to need a few places to go. Is there anywhere on Broadway, Broadway that they can go that would be a great resource for them? Yeah, so there's two things that jump out for me. Um, I live in the neighborhood, and my favorite store in the neighborhood is a place called University Hardware. It's located right at 113th and Broadway, and they literally have everything. Um, anything you could ever possibly need for your residence hall room, but don't bring too much because uh, we are in New York City, and uh, we live with less in New York City, a little bit less space, and a little bit less stuff. Um, but if you forget something, um, if you need something, if something is delayed in shipment, um, University Hardware can help you out. Um, as well as just remember, this is New York City. Anything and everything that you could ever want is probably available 24 hours a day. Up and down Broadway and Amsterdam, um, there's an incredible number of stores. Uh, Amazon is very quick on delivery, as are many of the other major box and consumer goods stores. Um, so don't worry if you forget something. It's also a helpful piece of advice that you don't have to bring everything for move in in August. You don't have to bring all your winter clothes right now. Um, we won't need boots and hats and scarves for a little bit. Um, so bring what you absolutely need if that helps you sort of bring less um, and know that you can always pick up or ship or um, grab anything else you need at any time. Thank you, Matthew. Um, this is a question for Nestor, and I appreciate this question because I'm a transfer student too. Um, are there going to be student activities next week for transfer students um, and visiting and exchange students? Are there any kind of activities that you can kind of throw out there, Nestor, and tell them about how to get involved? Yeah, definitely. So there are a lot of uh, events planned specifically for our transfer visiting and combined students. Uh, one that I can give you a sneak peek on is a boat cruise for all of those transfer visiting and combined students to get on. You'll be listening to music, grab some food, and literally start getting to know um, other students in your program. The best way to get make friends is being stuck on a boat for a couple of hours. So it'll be a lot of fun, and it was a hit last year. And there is also, and I can, yes, there's also the guidebook. Uh, app, which already has a list of all of those events going on. So you can start planning that out. There's an option to start saving things to your personal schedule. So you can start saying, okay, this seems like a transfer visiting combined event plan. I want to um, have that part of my schedule and you can add that. So you can start planning out your week and how that's going to go. All right. Awesome. Um, and now we're going to transfer back to Menly. There's still so many questions. <laughs> How do you find, Minley, how do you find the actual um, check-in station, the physical lo location um, where you go? And then can you drive right up to the building and unload? Can you kind of go back to that and explain how that situation is? I know that you have to get things from your car and you have to take them to the building, but can you kind of go back? There's still some questions about that. For sure. Uh, so again, because it's uh, New York City, it depends on really where your building is located. Uh, folks will be in different kinds of buildings. Some are large residence halls, which you probably are familiar with that are typical at most universities and colleges. Uh, some are smaller brownstones, which is more like a, a small house in New York City. So uh, those are going to vary. And also, depending on what street you're on, some streets have a lot more traffic, a lot more cars, large trucks coming through. So it really is going to vary depending on what building you're at. So to quickly unload, in many cases, that will be possible. In some cases, it won't be possible directly near the building. You might have to go down the block. Uh, you can be nearby. So it really just depends on what building you're going to be in. For instance, there was one specific question about Wien Hall. Wien Hall is actually surrounded by a courtyard. That courtyard has no access to cars. Uh, so for anyone who's unloading near Wien, you unload at the sidewalk, and then you will take the walk over through the courtyard to get into the main entrance of the building. Uh, also, in order to find your check-in locations, uh, on the housing website, we have them listed. And also in the communication that went out on August 10th, uh, it was titled Transfer, Combined Plan, and Exchange Students. We also posted that communication uh, that talks about all the steps that are links uh, to the pages where you can go and see exactly where your residence hall is and in one column and the next column lists your check-in station location uh, and it lists the building that you're going to be checking in at and also if you need to know the address of directions uh, that is also on our website so for anyone who is curious about where they're going to be uh, just review that communication and or review our website and it'll tell you exactly what building you're in and then also where your check-in station is located. So in other words, Menly, it's helpful probably to have someone with the car and then someone with the stuff unloading. 
For sure. Yeah. It's gonna, it, you want to make sure that you bring enough people to help uh, do that process. If you're coming by yourself, uh, it'll be tough to navigate. But if you have enough people with you, uh, because remember, you'll have to go to the check-in location, uh, collect the items to be able to help you move. If you're going to use them, you don't have to use them. We offer them as a service in case people need them uh, to make it easier to unload and get things into the building. Uh, because again, New York City buildings vary. Most of our buildings have elevators, but not all. Uh, some you have to walk up. So just things to keep in mind. Sure. It looks like we have time for one more question. And Matthew, I'm going to ask this for you. Can you talk a little bit about Columbia campus safety? Sure. So we are an urban campus. We're in New York City. And so I think the most important thing here is for everyone um, to practice good situational awareness. And so I would encourage you all as a first step, students and families, uh, to go to uh, the um, app store for your device, whether it's uh, uh, iOS or um, uh, or another type of cell phone, and download the Lion Safe app. Columbia Public Safety has an incredible app that organizes, synthesizes, and collects all of our campus safety and transportation information into one useful app um, with lots of different tools about how students can request um, a walking escort, the VIA ride service, or take the Columbia shuttles um, to and from various locations across um, our part of the city. Um, it also has some really smart features, including a safe walk feature that enables you to share in real time your location with a friend. Let's say you're going to go visit um, a friend that lives in a different building. You can temporarily turn on this feature and your friend can literally see your movement across campus. It's a good way to sort of um, monitor your arrival. Uh, and share your, your real-time location with, um, with someone on a short-term basis. The bottom line is this is a city and we want people to be um, uh, cautious and aware at all times. The number one piece of advice is to, you know, I know I just sort of mentioned a, a tool on your cell phone, but the actual number one piece of advice is to be situationally aware. Put your cell phone down, look around, pay attention, use the tools and resources that Columbia and the city have to offer um, to help you minimize risk. Um, the campus is safe. There's public safety in all the residence halls. Um, you know, there's a good um, presence of cameras and, and safety staff that patrol the neighborhood 24 hours a day. Um, and this is a partnership between students um, and the community. Um, and we want you to be safe. We want you to navigate the city. And we're going to give you some good tools and resources in order to do that. But the number one thing everyone on this webinar should do is download the Lion Safe app and put the Columbia Public Safety phone number into their cell phones, 212-854-5555. Thank you so much, Matthew. Unfortunately, we are out of time for additional questions. However, if you still have something you would like to ask, you can reach out to us via email at ugrad-family at columbia.edu or ugrad student life at columbia.edu. A big thank you to our panelists and to you for joining us today. We are super excited to see you soon on campus. Go back and watch all the webinars on our YouTube channel if you missed any. And it's going to be a great year. Take good care, everyone. Bye.